Hey team, we're going to learn how we can trigger functionality whenever somebody scrolls to an element in React using the Intersection Observer. I'm Colby Fayok, and if you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. When working with the web, we want to be able to provide interactions and delay on top of just simple technical information. Like here on Apple.com's iPhone feature, we can see that as we're scrolling, different functionality keeps happening. And while this example is a little bit more complex than what we'll be working with today, it still shows an example of how we can scroll down and they're giving us a different and new experience by being able to take advantage of where we are inside the page and giving us that information contextually. While there's different methods on how we can do this, such as detecting when somebody's actually scrolling, the Intersection Observer API is perfect for this kind of example, where we can really target a specific element, and we can see whenever we actually reach that element when scrolling down through the page. We can do this by creating a new instance of the Intersection Observer, and when we're actually observing an HTML element, we're able to fire function anytime that visibility within the viewport changes. Now, maybe you're already familiar with this, or maybe you're completely new to the concept, but doing so in React is a little bit trickier than doing it with vanilla JavaScript. So we're gonna use React and see how we can do this using hooks like use state, use effect, and use ref. To give us a starting point for where we can follow along together, we're going to use the starter I created using Next.js. And while Next.js is absolutely not critical to our walkthrough itself, it's just what we're going to use as the demo for where we're going to work on an actual React project. Now to see how this works, we're going to use this demo landing starter that I created, where it's really just a simple one page site, where we're going to be able to trigger that functionality whenever somebody gets to a certain part of the page. Now if you're following along with me, you can find the link to the starter right inside of the YouTube description. But I'm going to start off by going ahead and copying this yarn command for creating next app. I'm going to paste that right inside my terminal, and I'm also going to append my scroll page, something super creative like that, where that's going to create a new project for us by cloning down this existing project on GitHub. It's going to install all the dependencies for us, and it's also going to refresh Git history. So we have a great starting point for actually getting started inside of our React application. But once it's done, we can now CD into that new directory. We can run yarn dev, which is going to start our development server. And if we open that up inside of our browser, we can see that as expected, it's a really simple one page site that has a bunch of content pre-filled in here, where really we're going to see, like we have here, have you scrolled down here yet? And we're gonna make this dynamic rather than the page just simply not knowing. If we look in the code, we can go to the source directory, then pages and index. And here we can see that nothing really special is going on. We just have some components that are wrapping each individual section of the page. But as we scroll down, we can find that section that we were talking about, where we're going to add a ref to this element that we can detect using the intersection observer, which we'll get to in a second here, where we can dynamically say if we're at this spot or not. So to get started, I actually need to be able to access that DOM element whenever I'm using the intersection observer. To do this, we want to use the use ref hook, which is going to allow us to create a reference to that HTML element that we'll be able to later access. So at the top of the file, I'm going to import use ref from React, and then I need to create a new reference with that hook. So I'm going to say constant my ref is equal to use ref. Next, I need to add this ref to the element that I want to track with this ref. So I'm going to scroll all the way back down and find that section. And then how about right on this H2, I'm going to say ref is equal to my ref. Now, the way that this is actually going to work is once React actually renders this component inside of the browser, it will then give us access to that DOM node. So we can't actually access this properly inside of the render method itself. Instead, we have to use what's called a use effect hook where we're going to access it after it renders. So in my import statement, I'm going to add use effect and then right inside underneath my ref, I'm going to say use effect. I'm going to pass in a function where I'm going to simply add an empty array as a dependency. So this only runs once, but let's console log out my ref. And I'm going to access that as my ref.current, meaning I want the current value of that ref. Now, if we head back over to the browser and look inside the web console, we can already see that we have that element. If we scroll down, we can also see that if we're hovering over it while it's in view, we have that reference to that new HTML element, which now we can use with the intersection observer. So next we wanna create a new instance of that intersection observer. So I'm gonna say constant observer is equal to new intersection, if I spell it right, observer. And then we wanna start off by passing in the first argument, which is going to be the callback or the function that's going to actually be fired anytime the visibility changes of that observed element. 
that function is going to take an argument of entries where that entries is going to be a list of all the items that actually match the observed item. Now in our instance, that's only going to be one item. So we can actually say constant entry is equal to entries zero, which is going to grab that first item. And then we can even log that out just so we can see what happens after that's observed. Now, finally, we can't actually get this working without telling the observer what element to actually observe. So finally, let's add observer.observe we're going to pass in that my ref dot current. If we reload the browser, we can already see that we have an entry inside the web console. And if we expand that, we can see that we have is intersecting equals false, which is what we're going to be paying attention here. Now you might be tempted to use is visible here with our default configuration. And just a quick warning, that's not going to work as expected if using it, how we're going to be following along. I actually learned this myself while working through this, but is visible is only going to work if we explicitly tell intersection observer that we want to be tracking visibility, meaning if the element is actually visible as opposed to just intersecting in the page. If we add that tracking visibility feature, it's going to be a little bit less performant. And in our case, we don't necessarily need that. So we're going to stick with the is intersecting. But back on our page, if we scroll down and eventually hit that section, we can see that we got another entry. And if we open it up, we can see that is intersecting is now true. And if we even scroll back up, we get another one and we can see that it's back to false. So now that we know whether or not it's actually in view, we need to be able to store that value so that we can use it inside of our React component. To do that, we're going to use another hook called useState where we can store the state of that visibility. So I'm going to create a new instance of it with my element is visible and you probably want to give a better name for that. But since we're just going through this walkthrough, it's going to be easier for us to understand what I'm talking about and working through. So we're going to leave it at set, but we're going to also add a set. My element is visible because we also want to be able to control that value and we're going to set that equal to use state. Now, anytime that this observer actually fires this function, we want to change that visibility state. So I'm going to use that function and I'm going to say whenever that fires, I want to set entry is intersecting to be the value of my element is visible. So let's get rid of this console log for entry and we can actually log the value of my element is visible just to see if this works. We can see that once the page loads and it's able to actually detect it with the intersection observer, we see that it is false and it's not visible. But if we scroll down, we can see that it's eventually true. So let's grab that value and I'm going to scroll all the way down to that section. And how about instead of IDK, I'm going to say my element is visible. Yes. And if it's not, I'm just going to simply say no. We can see that this section does say yes, it is visible. Now, just to prove that it's actually working when we're not on that section, we can use the inspector tool and inspect that particular element. And we can see here that it's currently saying yes. But if I scroll up, we can see that it says that it changes to no. Now this all works really nicely and it's not too much code to be able to do this, but what if we have a hook that automatically does all this for us? We can do exactly that with the react intersection observer hook, where if we scroll down here on the docs, we can see that once we install it, we have a similar experience to other react hooks where if we add this ref to our element, we're going to be able to get that state variable of whether or not it's in view. We can even get access to the HTML entry itself, but all by simply using this use in view hook. So let's give this a try. I'm going to copy this yarn add command and in my terminal, I'm going to add that as a dependency. And then we can see in the usage, the very first thing we want to do is actually import that into our project. So at the top of the page, I'm going to add my use in view hook and we can see for usage, we want to destructure these three values. So I'm just going to simply copy this line and paste it at the top of my homepage where because we already have some of these values defined throughout our project, let's just rename some of them, such as my ref, where we just simply can rename that to my ref so that we don't have to update the HTML at the bottom. We can say instead of in view, we can say that we want it to be my element is visible. That way we don't have to update that logic as well. But we can see that all we're going to need to do is pass in this one line, remove the options unless you have particular configuration that you want to add. We don't even need the entry here, but this is all we need to do the exact same thing. Once the page reloads, we can see that it still says no, but if we scroll down, it'll eventually say yes, which is perfect. Now, this is a cool way to be able to show this functionality, but what if we have something that's a little bit more delightful, such as what if we make this rocket grow and then just blast off the page? So to start inside of my code, I'm going to duplicate this line and let's call this rocket ref this time. And we're going to say rocket is visible. Down at the bottom of my page, we can see we have this paragraph tag around our rocket where I'm going to set the ref equal to rocket ref. 
And for the animation, we're going to use some transform properties. And it's not going to work as correctly as we want it with just this paragraph tag, as that takes up too much space. So let's add a little bit more specific of a tag for just this rocket itself. I'm going to add a span here, and we're going to add a class name, which we'll add the CSS for in a second, and we'll call that styles.rocket. Now, if I open up my styles home.module.scss file, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to add that new rocket class name, and let's just call this display inline block. And at this point, nothing should have changed with our rocket. But now let's say anytime we actually scroll down to this element, we want to trigger an animation. And the way we can do that is with CSS animations by adding a new class to this element. Now I'm going to paste in this CSS, but I'll walk through it right now, where we have this new class name called animate rocket, where we're setting the name of the animation that we want to use, which is defined below that we'll get to. And we want to define the duration of that animation, which is going to be five seconds. Now this is the class name we're going to add to the rocket in order to trigger this animation. But once it's triggered, we're going to run this set of keyframes, which if we look through here, all we're really doing is we're growing the rocket, we're making it a little wobbly with the rotate, and then finally, once we get past 20%, we're going to go to the rest of it with 100% by making the rocket super big and just blasting off the page. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to make this class name dynamic. So I'm going to first use template literal tags so that I can make it dynamic. And I'm going to say inside as another variable, if rocket is visible, I want to say that I want to add a class name of styles.animate rocket. Otherwise, I don't want to add anything. But now once I reload the page and I actually scroll down to my section, we can see that our rocket takes off. Now, if that happened too quickly, I'm going to reload again and I'm going to show. We can see that once we get there, it wobbles a little bit and it goes right off the screen. Now, this is just a simple animation to add something fun to our page that typically would just be static content. But you can imagine the possibilities of what we can do by taking this concept and applying it for a better user experience and by simply adding delight. There's a lot of use cases for being able to use the position somebody scrolled inside of the page, whether it's trying to load heavy resources that somebody might not have scrolled to, or like our, in our case, where we're just trying to add something fun to our page. What's your favorite use case of being able to actually trigger functionality when somebody's scrolling down? Let me know in the comments. If you want to learn how to level up your on-page animations, check out my video, how to use Framer Motion to add animations and page transitions to a Next.js app. Or if you want to learn more about how we can work with browser events inside of React, such as using the keyboard to navigate through search autocomplete results, check out my video, Browser Event Listeners in React for Search and Autocomplete. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.